How do you continue to get that excitement and 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 make this next generation thinking about and remembering the moments they're seeing today for the rest of their lives? Yeah. Because there's so much media out there and so much to consume. And people are getting lost in X and Y and Z. And we all remember the time when you were coming up, right? But do you feel that the WWE is as uh, prominent and as uh, much of a force as it was when you were on the come up? So I, I do, right? I, I think it, the, the global nature of what we do and, and the phenomenon of what we do, like how much it touches people and the emotion of it. There was a moment in time, I think, because it was so... I don't want to say new because the Hogan era was so big. Steve and I used to stand at a curtain every night. Steve, Steve and I are both like the kind of guy that, like I would go to the shows, I watch every match. Like I'd have my gear on 30 minutes before the show, I'd be standing at that curtain watching everything. Student, mm -hmm. a student. Yeah, yeah, Steve's the same way. Yeah. So a lot of times, even when we were facing, we'd be like on opposite ends of the curtains because then people wouldn't know that we were just three feet away yeah. from each other right? <laughs> in case they saw us. But we'd be watching the show and doing like running commentary with each other while it was going on. Um, you know, it, it was so fresh and so new. We used to talk about all the time, God, you think this could ever get like it was in the 80s, mm -hmm. right? Like with Hogan and stuff. And I, I remember very distinctly being in Pittsburgh one time and, and the building was like half full and we had that exact conversation. And then like maybe two, three months later, we were there and it was to the rafters sold out like crazy. And the two of us were like, dude, this is insane. Like how big this has gotten. And it went like that. It went from, and, and it takes a spark and a moment to like capture people's imagination mm. of, of something like that, to something that wasn't even in their mindset of, of three weeks ago. And then all of a sudden something happens that everybody is talking about and all of a sudden it becomes the thing now the world is different today right like so there's so many options of things that you can do podcasts uh television shows TikToks. streaming stuff you can watch anything when you want to watch it you're not a yeah you're not a, a, a slave to the moment in time of well this comes on at nine and mm -hmm. there's only five other really good things on mm -hmm. at that time even to watch so you know what are you what are you going to watch the news you're going to watch mm -hmm. WWE, you know, I, well, and e that's e different. Even, even, I'm sorry to interrupt, George. Just, okay. Even just, um, you know, everyone in the world has to be a bit more sensitive right now, and, and and some of the more risky or some of the more exciting, like shock moments that we were able to have back then. Uh, you guys have done an incredible job of adapting, but but I think I think part of the uh, lore of of professional wrestling is the hardcore nature of it, right? Like, you got guys in there who don't give a fuck, right? They're showmen. They'll put their bodies on the line. They'll, you know, hit people with objects and yeah. go crazy. But you know, now you do have to work around those parameters a little bit more. You you do, but like, I often think that. So a lot of times that stuff is overblown. It's the story, mm. right? Like if you watch a movie, and I always equate what we do to movies, right? If to me, if you watch a movie and it's just a slasher film, it's fun. Mm -hmm but it's not going to stick with you forever. It's just mm. blood and guts and it's slashing and it, everything's just like the, who can do the more violent kill or the crazier kill or whatever that is, right? Then what's the most ridiculous way somebody can die, die in this movie and have their guts come out and an eye pop out of their head or whatever that is, right? It's not, it doesn't stick with you. It's not memorable. It's the stories. Even in that era, we did a lot of crazy stuff that was mind blowing and was shock television. But the reason it lasted was be not because of the shock television. That's maybe what made you go, what was that? But what kept you there was the emotion and the storytelling. You don't need the shock if you tell the emotion and the storytelling, right? And um, I, I, th there's moments in time of that f through generations. I remember when I was a kid and... You know, everybody like General Hospital. When they, you guys don't even probably know what that is. Oh, I do. Like, my mother watched it. Of course, day. my mom watches it to yeah. this day. There you go. And, and, and it was like the biggest moment in time of like this. I remember being a kid in this Luke Laura storyline, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and, but the whole world's like the most captivating thing. And then, like, I can remember seeing it. Like, my mom would record it every night. And then I remember watching and think, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> like, it, it's terrible. The acting's bad. Like, it's just terrible. But, like, the whole world was absolutely captivated Luke. by it because the story was so good. Like, then once you watch it for a couple of times, you're like, oh, yeah, now what's he going to do next? I don't know. This is crazy. It's the story. 
It, it, it really is. So the other stuff, while it's cool, after a while, it, I'm, I'm friends with a guy named John Milius. John Milius wrote Conan, uh, Apocalypse Now, right? Like classics, epic. Did, did, yeah. did wrote wrote the scene in Jaws where he talks about the Indianapolis and the whole, right, like just a crazy good writer. And, and one time he said to me, we were talking about movies and, and our business, and he goes, "Machine Gun Fire is boring after five seconds. No one cares, but I can make you a thirty minute scene in a movie with one bullet, one gun." one guy with a gun to another guy's head and tension, and you'll never forget it for the rest of your life, right? right? It's like- A thousand bullets versus one. Yep. Drama versus one. One that makes you have angst and feel, and oh my God, what, what, what's gonna happen next? I, I think about it all the time, like in Glorious Bastards, right? Like the opening scene with the guy at the farmhouse and the people who are under the floor, and you're like sweating watching the scene, right? Like you'll never forget that scene. I've seen people run across the screen a million times, and now there's anything wrong with that. Chainsaw. The, that's that's a part of what makes movies great. Yep. I I just need something mindless and go watch some people get murdered. Well, it's like, <laughs> right? well, it's like you think about horror movies, and and everybody's you know you would think everybody's mind would go to Jason and all, and Freddy Krueger, but like one of the greatest horror movies ever that everybody remembers is The Shining. And yeah. it's and it you know what I'm saying and it's and like please and it's, name please name the big horror like the horrible gory special effects scene in there. There's yeah. a little blood in the hallway with the two girls, but, but like but you it's know not, it's short, it's short, yeah. right? It's not somebody getting their head chopped right, off, right, right. Or, right? Like it's 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 the emotion and the feel, and it scares the shit out of you, right? Like look, the the magic of Jaws. I mentioned that movie a bit ago, right? Like uh, people wouldn't swim for forever, right? They some don't still. You hardly ever saw the shark, and it was a mistake. Because the mechanical shark wouldn't work. Right, right. Right? So they, they had all these scenes with the shark eating people and doing all this gory shit. And then the shark wouldn't work. So they had to just hide it, just show Finn coming through the water or the barrels dragging along the water with the music. And you knew the shark was coming. That's like really being in the ocean. You can't see the shark. It, it goes back to what we mentioned earlier. It's, it's sometimes it's about what you don't say, what you don't show, 100%. those moments of silence and making people yeah, captivated dude, one, by, by 100%. Silence. But, but getting that and then. You you can know that, but in the moment when there are, you know, like in that moment tomorrow when there's 50,000 people there and they're going ape shit, to have the balls to wait, to have the balls to be silent, to take the risk of the, of that quiet, to get to the next level, that's a, that's a risk. And, and a lot of people don't have the guts to take it. But if you do, there's magic on the other side. Can I can I suggest something? Yeah. Um, what the fuck do I know? <laughs> but I'm gonna put on my. Uh, but you're a fan, so you do know. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't always been. I have. That's yeah. not true. I have been, but now I'm a fan. Fan, right? I'm invested. Yeah. 